The Mali Empire was one of the most powerful and influential empires in West Africa, and its history and legacy continue to be celebrated and studied today. This video will explore the origins and development of the Mali Empire, including the reign of Mansa Musa, the importance of gold and trade routes, the social hierarchy of the empire, the role of Timbuktu in scholarship and learning, and the factors that led to the decline of the empire. The Mali Empire emerged in the 13th century in the region around the Upper Niger River, which is now modern-day Mali. The empire was founded by Sundiata Keita, who is often referred to as the Lion King or the Lion of Mali. Sundiata was a legendary figure who united several smaller states and created a strong centralized government. He is also credited with establishing the social and cultural foundations of the Mali Empire. Under Sundiata's leadership, the Mali Empire grew in power and influence, and it reached its peak in the 14th century under the rule of Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa is one of the most famous and influential figures in the history of the Mali Empire. He is known for his legendary wealth and for his pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324, during which he distributed vast amounts of gold and other gifts along the way. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage and his lavish spending earned him a reputation as one of the richest men in history. Mansa Musa also played an important role in the spread of Islam in West Africa. He brought back scholars and architects from the Middle East to build mosques and madrasas in the empire, and he established the city of Timbuktu as a center of Islamic learning and scholarship. Trade and commerce played a critical role in the success and expansion of the Mali Empire. The empire's wealth was largely derived from its control of the gold trade and the trans-Saharan trade routes. Mali was one of the largest gold producers in the world at the time, and its kings amassed vast wealth through the taxation of gold production and trade. In addition to gold, the Mali Empire also exported ivory, salt, and slaves, which were highly prized commodities in the medieval world. The trans-Saharan trade routes were a network of trade routes that connected West Africa to the Mediterranean world and beyond. The routes were used by traders and merchants who traveled in caravans across the Sahara Desert, carrying goods such as gold, ivory, salt, and textiles. The Mali Empire was strategically located at the crossroads of these trade routes, and controlled many of the key trading cities and oases. The empire's capital, Niani, was situated at the southern edge of the Sahara, and served as a major trading center. The city of Timbuktu, located in the heart of the Sahara, was another important trading city and the center of learning and scholarship. To facilitate trade, the Mali Empire established a system of weights and measures, as well as a common currency, which was based on gold dust. The empire also provided security for traders, ensuring safe passage and protecting caravans from bandits and raiders. The Mali Empire's control of the gold trade and the trans-Saharan trade routes gave it enormous economic power and allowed it to build a vast empire that extended from the Atlantic coast to the Niger River. The wealth generated by trade and commerce was used to build impressive public works, such as mosques, libraries, and universities, as well as to support the arts and culture. The empire's economic success also allowed it to build a powerful military and to expand its influence through conquest and diplomacy. The social hierarchy of the Mali Empire was based on a complex system of caste and class, which determined an individual's social status and role in society. At the top of the social hierarchy was the king, who was considered to be a divine ruler with significant political and religious authority. The king was assisted by a council of ministers, who were responsible for advising him on matters of governance. Below the king and the council of ministers were the nobility and the warrior class. The nobility consisted of wealthy landowners and merchants, who were responsible for managing the empire's resources and finances. The warrior class was made up of skilled soldiers and military commanders, who were responsible for defending the empire and expanding its borders through conquest. Below the nobility and the warrior class were the commoners, who were divided into several subgroups. The most important of these were the free commoners, who were free to own property and engage in commerce, but who had limited political power. The free commoners were followed by a range of artisan groups, such as blacksmiths, weavers, and leer tower workers, who had specific skills and were highly respected in society. These groups were generally organized into guilds, which regulated their trade and ensured that their members received fair compensation for their work. At the bottom of the social hierarchy were the slaves, who were usually prisoners of war or debtors who had been sold into slavery. Slavery was an important part of the Mali Empire's economy, and slaves were used for a range of tasks, including farming, mining, and domestic work. Despite the rigidity of the social hierarchy, the Mali Empire was known for its cultural and religious tolerance. 
The empire was home to a diverse range of ethnic and religious groups, including Muslims, animists, and followers of indigenous West African religions. The empire's rulers were known for their tolerance and for their support of religious scholarship and learning. Timbuktu is a city in the West African country of Mali, located on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert. It was a major center of trade, scholarship, and Islamic learning during the height of the Mali Empire in the 14th century. The city was a major hub for the Trans-Saharan trade route, which linked West Africa to North Africa and the Mediterranean world. Gold, salt, and other commodities were traded along this route, and Timbuktu was a key stopping point for caravans traveling across the Sahara. The city's location on the Niger River also made it an important center of river trade, as boats could transport goods up and down the river to other parts of West Africa. Timbuktu was also renowned for its intellectual and cultural achievements. The city was home to a large number of scholars and religious leaders, who studied and taught in its many mosques and universities. The University of Sinkore, founded in the 14th century, was one of the most important centers of Islamic scholarship in West Africa, attracting students from across the region. The city was also home to many skilled artisans, who produced high-quality goods such as textiles, leatherwork, and metalwork. During the 14th and 15th centuries, Timbuktu was a major center of the Islamic world. The city was known for its large number of libraries, which housed many rare and valuable manuscripts on a wide range of subjects, including medicine, law, history, and philosophy. These manuscripts were written in Arabic and other languages, and many were beautifully illuminated with intricate designs and calligraphy. In the 16th century, the decline of the Mali Empire and the rise of other West African states led to a decline in Timbuktu's fortunes. The city was later conquered by the Moroccan army in the 16th century, and many of its scholars and manuscripts were dispersed or destroyed. Despite this, Timbuktu remains an important center of West African culture and history, and its libraries and monuments have been designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Although having many achievements, the Mali Empire began to decline in the 15th century. A number of factors contributed to its decline, including political instability, economic decline, external pressures from rival empires and European traders, and the rise of Islamic fundamentalism. Political instability was a major factor in the decline of the Mali Empire. After the death of Mansa Musa in 1337, the empire was weakened by a succession of weak and ineffective rulers who were unable to maintain control over the empire's vast territories. There were also frequent power struggles and rebellions, particularly in the southern part of the empire, which weakened the central government. Economic decline was another significant factor in the decline of the Mali Empire. The empire's dependence on gold meant that fluctuations in the price could have a significant impact on the economy. In the 15th century, the price of gold began to decline, which led to a reduction in the empire's wealth and power. The empire also suffered from a decline in agricultural productivity, which was caused by soil exhaustion and overgrazing. External pressures from rival empires and European traders also contributed to the decline of the Mali Empire. In the 15th century, the Songhai Empire emerged as a powerful rival to the Mali Empire, and the two empires engaged in frequent wars and conflicts. European traders also began to establish trade relations with West Africa, which undermined the dominance of the Mali Empire in the region. Finally, the rise of Islamic fundamentalism was a significant factor in the decline of the Mali Empire. In the 16th century, a number of Muslim reform movements emerged in West Africa, including the Fulani Jihad, which sought to purify Islam and establish a more fundamentalist interpretation of the faith. These movements challenged the authority of the ruling class and undermined the stability of the empire. In conclusion, the Mali Empire was one of the most powerful and influential empires in West Africa. Its legacy continues to be celebrated and studied today, particularly in the areas of art, culture, and scholarship. The empire's wealth and power were based on its control of gold and trade routes, as well as its political and social institutions. The Mali Empire was also known for its cultural and religious tolerance and for its support of scholarship and learning. Despite its decline, the Mali Empire remains an important and fascinating chapter in the history of West Africa. Thank you for watching Conceptual Learnings The Mali Empire, a historical and cultural overview of West Africa's golden age. Be sure to like and subscribe for more.